calcaneus fractures into six uh, presentations. One first would be the basics of calcaneus fracture. The second would be my 14 steps of operative fixes and open reduction internal fixation of calcaneus. Then uh, we will uh, go on to MIS calcaneus. Then certain extra articular calcaneus fractures. And the fifth would be complex calcaneus fractures. And the last part of the talk, last talk would be uh, on to calcaneus malunion and whether to fuse or to reconstruct. So there in all six talks, uh, if you get fatigue, if you get bored, just tell me, we can stop at any time. And the second important plea is, let this be a dialogue, then a monologue. So let it be quite interactive. Wherever you feel, you can stop me and we can always discuss it. So with this uh, uh, small uh, introduction, I will start sharing my screen. And... I hope uh, my screen is seen by everybody. Yes, visible, sir. Visible. Thank you. And uh, now I'm going to go with the slide. So, <clears throat> so this is the first talk. And my focus won't be the diagnosis of calcaneus fracture or all this thing. My focus would be management. Uh, for a closed fracture, for an open fracture. So the management of calcaneus fracture, as we all know, is full of controversies, either to conserve or to operate. And we all know that British UK Hill trial, which came up in a big bang and just it vanished with the same big bang, that they said that you need to conserve calcaneus fracture. There are so many other studies they said you need to conserve calcaneus fracture. Then there are people who say, no, you need to go and operate calcaneus fracture. Why talking about a conservative management of calcaneus fracture came in war? Because either you operate or you conserve a calcaneus fracture, practically speaking, results are same. Both the groups, they develop subtalar stiffness and probably late subtalar arthritis. It is the biological injuries to the cartilage which leads to this kind of a problem and on to which we do not have any control. And that's why patients who are not operated, they may land up with a little stiff subtalar joint but painless stiffness. While patients who are not operated, they would land up with painful stiffness of the kelta of the subtalar joint yes operated cases do have grave wound complications so then question is if so why operate a calcaneus fracture and then as i am an operate man for calcaneus fracture i have my own thought process that why what are my goals to operate calcaneus fracture the first and foremost goal to operate a calcaneus fracture in my books is to establish the shape and size in a three-dimensional plane of a subcutaneous bone. If we, and this is, these are the pictures from uh, uh, my book. See, there are so many important structures, tendoachylis, subtalar joint, plantar, heel, fat, but calcaneocuboid joint, ankle joint, flexor hollicis longus, posterior tibial nerve, Peroneae, calcaneofibular ligament, sural nerve, and plantar flatbed. All this, if you do not reconstruct calcaneus fracture nicely, can get impinged. So that is the first goal. The second goal, surgical goal or aim, is to prevent late catastrophic complications of malunion. And we all have seen the kind of catastrophic malunion complications, such kind of malunions. And would you not operate a, such a kind of calcaneus malunion? I mean, calcaneus fracture with such a... And if you not operate, we won't operate. This is the kind of malunion it will result into. Or this is the kind of malunion it would result. In this case, I ended up fusing uh, the subtalar joint, talonavicular joint, and calcaneocuboid joint. 
over and above doing a surgery in two stages. Well, first stage, I had to go in and do the debridement, put in the antibiotic impregnated cement granules, and then second stage, going ahead with the fusion. Would you not operate this kind of cases? And these are all calcaneus malunion cases not operated. So I feel that the kind of cases we encounter, probably the Western world have never encountered such cases. And that's why they talk of treating calcaneus fractures conservatively. Surgical management is indicated for prevention of late complications which are associated with calcaneus malunion. And the third goal is restoration of articular surface to the best of possibility. So, unlike other intraarticular fracture, for an intraarticular calcaneus fracture, this goal goes at number three than other two goals. So, this is what a legend said: try to establish articular congruity plus shape and size of this bone to as much normal as possible at the first instance only because late complications due to malunion are very challenging to treat and are with worst outcomes. So let's start and talk about intra-articular fractures. I operate on every single intra-operative fracture except cases with comorbid conditions, very high risk cases, cases with poor skin conditions, peripheral vascular disease, cases with neuropathy. Yes, it is a surgery, but a different kind of surgery compound injuries and very elderly people. This is again a relative contracting case. And for me, it is the Sanders classification which guides us. And Sander came up with this classification where type 1 is a non-displaced intra-articular fracture and type 1 is amenable to percutaneous fixation. You just have to maintain the shape and size of the calcaneus and this you could do just with the percutaneous placement of the screw. Like this is the case of Sander 1 where this was treated just percutaneously, the shape and size and height of the calcaneus was restored. Or a sender one kind of uh, fracture like this, which was treated with a percutaneous placement of the screws only. Sender type 2, uh, maybe type 2A, 2B, 2C would come around with MIS approach, uh, MIS sinus tarsi approach. This is short sinus tarsi approach which spans from the tip of the fibula to the fourth metatarsal base. And this is a case done with the sinus tarsi approach. These are the CT images. This is a intraoperative image. Those days, these fancy plates were not available. This was a routine plate which was laid like this. And that's the plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, that's the eversion, that's inversion. And that's its own scar at the end of four years. Center type three for me, I would start taking the reduction first. If reduction, I am able to get reduction, I would proceed with MIS. Sometimes I might have to extend the MIS incision posteriorly for, uh, uh, you know, treating sender 3. If I am not able to get the reduction, I will not commit myself to MIS, then I will go in for open reduction, internal fixation with lateral extensile approach. Now, this is sender 3 which was done MIS like this, the plate was uh, slid uh, underneath the peronia and this was the center 3 which I treated these are the CT images which was treated with open reduction and internal fixation like this. In center type 4 uh, severely comminuted fractures and therein again there is a debate whether to go for open reduction internal fixation or primary fusion. Before 4 years it was that all sender 4 should be treated with primary fusion. It was Stephen Ramel's article in Indian Journal of Orthopedics, which has uh, developed everybody's attention uh, towards the open reduction internal fixation of sender 4. So now world over people have changed to going ahead with open reduction internal fixation instead of going ahead with primary fusion. And this is really a recent controversy whether to do fusion or fixation. Right. And we shall touch on to this topic later when we talk about complex fractures. So this was in short a presentation on two basics of uh, uh, a calcaneus fracture. And uh, I would uh, stop sharing this and I would if I if there are any question, I would like to take the questions or we go on to 
14 steps of open reduction internal fixation of calcaneus fracture. I guess let me finish MIS and ORIF and then we uh, take up the question. Nigi sir, is that okay? Perfect, sir. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Thank you. So let me uh, go ahead with this uh, 14 steps of open reduction internal fixation of calcaneus fracture. And mind you, even today, the lateral extensile approach is a real good approach. And unless one does 25 uh, open reduction internal fixation of calcaneus fracture with lateral extensile approach, then it is then only it is said that you should embark on to MIS calcaneus. So this definitely forms the basis of our surgery of calcaneus fracture. Now, what are the prerequisites to your uh, lateral extensile approach? And obviously, we all know this: the that the uh, wrinkle sign when you dorsiflex and evert the foot. If you see the wrinkles at the junction of dorsal and plantar sclen, that is a time you feel safe to go in and do the surgery. Obviously, you give a lateral position to the patient and surgeon stands at the distal heel end, assistant stands opposite to the surgeon and CM comes diagonally in such a manner that the AP imaging in the CM would show the lateral image and the lateral, when you turn CM into lateral, assistant pulls the foot into dorsiflexion and you can see the axial image. Again, extended lateral approach, what we are described. And you need to retract the flap in such a manner that you are really not touching the flap. And there, this kind of a K-wire fixation is what we do. I like to put K-wire into anterior and posterior part of the talus to retract the flap. And if required, I put in one K wire into cuboid when I want to go towards the calcaneo cuboid articulation. And before you bend this wire, put a weight gauze, uh, you know, pass the weight gauze from this wire so that your this flap always remains weight. So once you are exposed, we're going ahead with the step by step procedure. The first step would be the section of the lateral wall and hinging this lateral wall down or sometimes you can remove the lateral wall and put it on the back table. So this is the video showing that I'm trying to dissect and sometimes uh, you also need to use osteotom if it's a like 10, 15 days old case. So you reflect the lateral wall down or if it is coming in your way, you can just excise it and put it on the back table. The step two is putting a stance pin or statement pin, which either you pass lateral to medial or you pass posterior to anterior. I like to pass statement pin from lateral to medial because, or you could pass medial to lateral because this will not hinder your passage of vertical screws if at all you are pushing it. So this is the lateral to medial passage of the statement pin and here you can see that the weight goes are slipped through the uh, k wires over the flap and then k wire are bent so that flap always remains weight that's very important if you want to avoid the skin complication and the step three is removal of articular facet fragment mostly it is one fragment if you are dealing with standard two, it could be three fragment, two fragment. If you are dealing with standard three, so uh, articular facet is removed and it is put into the back table. So this is the video which shows that how articular facet fragment is delivered and you remove it. Now sometimes, uh, sometimes you have uh, multiple fragments. And how to manage this multiple fragment? You put the fragment over a mob, draw anterior, posterior, upper and lower part of the uh, fra fragment so that you don't miss out. And then put that fragment onto the mob and fold the mob, label that mob as one, two, three, four, and preserve it onto the back table. 
So this is what I'm doing here. The mob is folded and then I'm going to label this mob as one, two or three. So whenever you have multiple fragment and we remove the multiple fragment, this should be the practice. So sometimes if there are small fragment, we ought to miss that whether it was a middle fragment or it was the inner fragment. Then the step four is reduction of sustained aculum tali. This is infrequently needed. Most often than not, sustained aculum fragment onto which we are building the reduction is into the position. But if it is not into the position, one way is to do it from lateral to medial side. So from lateral, you put in some instrument, either artery forcep or a frayer or a spike and try to manipulate this fragment and maybe temporarily you can put in a wire from sustained aculum fragment going into the talus. Because this medial fragment must be in the position for you to maintain the reduction. Sometimes it is not possible to go from lateral to medial. Then you need to go from medial side to really restore the congruity or the uh, or the positioning of this sustained tacular fragment. So I have been using medial destructor and doing close manipulation for uh, if, I, if I really want to manipulate onto this fragment or sometimes you need to take a medial incision and open that fragment up, reduce this fragment, that also you may need to do. Step five is the reduction of body with the sustained aculum fragment. So you remove the articular facet fragment, you have, you really, so you have, you have reflected your lateral wall down, you have removed your articular facet fragment, now you want to reduce this medial fragment with the body. So for that, a frayer can be put in, a, a spike can be put in, or the best preferred method is to put in a lamina spreader here and jack this fragment out. And you also have your stainment pin or a sun pin with which you are doing what is called as Vedasas maneuver. You are pulling the body fragment downwards outwards and into valgus from varus. Mind you, you have a body fragment in calcaneus fracture which has gone up, which has gone into varus and it has also translated medial. So you need to pull it down, you need to pull it out and you need to pull it out into the uh, valgus. So this is how uh, 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 you can put in an, uh, uh, a spike, I put in here two spikes, could be little risky, you need to be watchful. Or this is the one which I prefer. So this is the kind of positioning of the body and then you distract with the lamina spreader and you will get the reduction. So once you restore the hill height, once you correct the virus of the hill, you need to temporarily fix it. And the best way to fix is to start with the K-wire on a lateral aspect and go towards the sustained aculum because this is a very strong bone. And once you pass this K wire, the second K wire should be built, should be absolutely flush to the medial cortex of the proximal fragment. So this is how you fix up uh, restored hill height as well as corrected virus. So this is what should be done. This is a diagrammatic representation. A wire from body is going into sustained aculum and wire from body in a, in a medially goes to the sustained aculum. Then the step seven is now you want to put your articular facet fragment back into the reduced position and fix it temporarily with one K wire, which passes from lateral to medial towards sustained aculum. So this is your articular facet fragment. This is your medial sided reduction done. Body is reduced with the sustained aculum fragment and you don't forget here there are risky things. You have uh, FHL tendon and posterior tibial nerve. When you are putting this fragment, you should be watchful. When you are passing your K-wire, it goes to the sustained aculum talus. Normally, this K-wire goes forward, 10 degree forward into sustained aculum. I would also like to talk about a sustained aculum view. Anybody who is aware about, uh, except Naseem, you may not come out with the answer, but anybody who is taking sustentacular view when you are doing open reduction or MIS calcaneus? 
anybody in the group is aware about sustentacular view no sir no no sir okay. so what i'll do i'll show you the uh, uh, video of how to get intra operative sustentacular view because it is the sustentacular view when you see complete delineation of sustentaculum your passage of this wire would make your life easy so you are putting a facet fragment back here i have already put in two uh, wires and then facet fragment is put in back and once this fragment is put in back you put in a temporary wire now sometimes you have multiple fragment so how are you going to do this so when you want to thread multiple fragment you have to thread this multiple fragments with k wire and start with your k wire from the sustentaculum talon and part of the tip of the k wire would come here you put in one fragment again pass that k wire threading that that fragment and then you put the lateral most fragment so this is the one way of threading the fragment so say this is a a kind this this is a kind of uh, fracture then you would put in the wire and thread it with the k wire and this is another way where you can put in the k wires on your back you can you can put in the fragments on your back table pass a k wire through that fragment and then you re reduce fragment are threaded with the k wire outside and then you put this into the into the uh, uh, into the calcaneus uh, uh, open calcaneus fracture and then pass the k wire into sustentaculum talon so these are the two ways of doing Uh, uh threading of the fragment when you have multiple pieces these are the two ways you can thread the fragment either medial to lateral or you can thread fragments outside and put that block inside the fracture the step 8 is reduction of body plus articulated articular fragment with an antero lateral fragment so thereby you are restoring jesan's angle so this is what you are obliged to do so you already fix the articular facet fragment with 2k wires you already fix body with the articular facet and sustentaculum with 2k wires and now you have to fix this with the antero lateral fragment and this is how you would do you would push it with the uh, pusher restore the gisan's angle here in you have uh, uh, you have restored your uh, gisan's angle and Uh, this is how you will manipulate once you manipulated you would like to pass a wire in both this situation if the situation in articular facet is very much comminuted you can push your wire into talus if the articular uh, if this article this fragment is very much comminuted you can use two wires and you can cross q body crossing of the joint is advisable preferred and allowed in foot and ankle so once you do this this is how you go in and you restore the length of calcaneus with one or two k wires if the situation is very much comminuted you may like to you may like to span this wire across the calcaneus cuboid joint so this is how it looks so this is heel length restoring wire these are heel height and varus restoring wire and these are articular fragment fixing wire and these three wires are retracting wire so this is how your construct would be then ready for the fixation so before you start may check ap when you check ap you see the lateral when you check lateral you see the axel and you see broadens view okay you are not listening to the sound i will stop share here I will have to enable audio anyway. So uh, these are the intraoperative videos showing that how you really uh, go ahead and uh, how you really go ahead and. Uh, take your intraoperative view and i am just trying to share the 
audio i will have to share sound okay are you able to listen to the sound no so in a in a lateral position patient is there and when you want to see the axial assistant would pull the thing on a four foot and this is how you will be able to see the lateral view now this is how you would be able to see the broadens view you are putting it into 45 degree of internal rotation and your beam is fired at the tip of the lateral malleolus and your tube is tilted to 10 20 30 and 40 degree and this is a 10 degree view broadens view uh and this is the 20 degree broadens view as you go down this is 30 and this is 40 degree broadens view so this is the second intraoperative view you uh, take then you fix the articular facet fragment either outside the plate or through the plate i like to fix this outside the plate and i like to fix it with one or to 5 mm or 4 mm cannulated cancellous screw so facet fragment as this video shows is fixed outside the facet now this is the sustentacular view good i have this in this presentation so how do you take sustentacular view so you have to tilt your cm to 30 degree and when you tilt this cm to 30 this is a normal lateral view you don't have shadow of sustentacular ally here when you tilt your your cm to 30 degree this is how then excellent delineation of sustentaculum is seen and then you can direct your screw from posterior to anterior and you don't have to see any other view when you are seeing this view that is a sustentacular view step 11 as i said is fixing the articular facet fragment outside the plate step 12 would be repositioning of the lateral wall back so lateral wall once you do everything you reposition it back step 13 is neutralization with a plate so you fix up the plate you already fix up the articular facet fragment you have your k wires holding the reduction put in uh, your lateral uh, wall fragment back and neutralize it with the plate and you have various designs of plate available whatever fits uh, in your practice you can use this kind of plate now look at this picture i want to draw your attention to this screw if you see this screw this is a fully threaded screw which is almost flush to the medial border of the posterior tuberosity and sustentaculum this is the screw i almost always pass if i do mis then also i pass this screw if i do open then also i pass this screw because what i have noticed that this fracture where there is a combination of the medial sustentacular wall it is as good as a bicondylar proximal tibia fracture where you want to fix both the columns so i have noticed more so in mis that if you just fix a lateral plate if you don't give support here there is a possibility of late collapse into bar this plate may not be sufficient to hold it and mis plate absolutely is not sufficient to hold this so this screw plays a very vital role uh, in preventing a late varus collapse now there are optional steps you could do dry subtalar joint arthroscopy with 2.7 mm 30 degree scope and these are the scope images this was an unreduced uh, 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 fracture which now is reduced so in my series there were nine cases where i thought that under the radiology my reduction is perfect and then i had to go back and change my reduction and some people may like to put in bone graft into the void which i have not put in into any of my cases so that's about 14 step calcaneus fixation uh if we have any question on to open reduction uh i would feel that we will short out those questions 
uh, when we talk, once we talk about uh, MIS calcaneus. Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, you just elaborate about that particular step of taking sustentaculum telai view that what was the position of uh, image intensifier before and uh, it was changed to such and such position. Yeah. So, I think that I think every step was absolutely crystal clear. Yeah. So, uh, that I, I do not know why I could not uh, uh, get the audio. Uh, okay. I will have to share uh, some other presentation. Uh, give me a minute. Uh, a minute. Uh, I'm Kanma Manel, very, very clear. I heard you before, but every time the talk is better than the previous one. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, okay. I'm going to the radiology talk and okay. Just a minute. Okay, so, uh, okay. Uh, this is the talk on to intraoperative radiology, how we really do it intraoperatively. And uh, uh, that's what I already shared with uh, Okay. So, okay. Is this, are you able to see? Yes, we can see. My screen? Okay. Yes, we can see. Yeah. Okay. So, this would have uh, a kind of uh, audio uh, where you would be able to listen to what I was speaking, which you could not. Uh, okay, post uh, I don't want to discuss now. Calcaneus. Uh, is this screen seen? Yes, sir. Hello? Yeah, yes, yes sir. sir. It's seen very much seen. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, so for a calcaneus, intraoperatively, you need to take three views. And how do you take all these three views intraoperatively is what I'm going to show you. So one is your hairy section. When you want to see axial image intraoperatively for fracture calcaneus, CR is moved into lateral position. Patient is also lying in the lateral position and assistant dorsiflexes the Put and image is shoot, which will be seen as this image. Audio was okay. Perfect. Yes, sir. Then this is the broadened view. So that already I showed you. You need to take it in a okay. Now this is sustentacular view. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. There is a view called sustentacular view, which gives you idea where you want to push your sustentacular screw. To see the sustentacular view intraoperatively, CR is turned 30 degree and the view is taken. This is the normal lateral image, which is not showing you sustentacular view. Tell I. But this is the sustentacular view where you can see the complete delineation of sustentaculum and you can think thereafter to go into sustentaculum to pass one or two screws. So, is that clear? Yes, sir. So, there is a question on to elaboration of direction of 4 mm cannulated cancellous screw for the articular facet. So, yes, textbook mentioned cranial to caudal, posterior to anterior, lateral to medial. Uh, see, uh, if you're doing yeah, some tips to that, 
Number one is that seeing a sustentacular view, patient is in the lateral position and you are turning CM towards the CM technician. 30 degree towards the CM technician, you are turning the CM. So then you are going tangential to the view of sustentaculum talli. So that will give you a complete view of sustentaculum talli. So you can see this view. If you are a beginner, you can see this view also. And simultaneously, you can keep your CM into lateral position and see that view. And always put in two or three wires. Keep one wire as rotation prevention wire and other wire over which you are going to push this screw. So, uh, uh, suppose if you are finding it difficult to really throw the wire into sustentaculum, right? uh, I feel that uh, you can initially start with the axial imaging. You see it in the axial image and uh, go ahead with your screw position. Uh, as the patient is in the lateral position, how easy or what tips to do a medial approach if at all needed? So, uh, I will come to that. Uh, we are discussing the MIS. In MIS, I don't like to position my patient into the lateral position. In MIS, I position my patient into floppy lateral position. Because most often than not, you are obliged to put a medial distractor in calcaneus fracture. More so when you want to do MIS uh, surgery. So I'm going to come to, uh, to the answer of uh, that particular uh, uh, question. Uh, uh, bhai. Yeah, please. Uh, as you rightly said, his problem is that if you see only lateral view, then that articular fragment screw is only end on. It's only the tip of the wire is seen. So as you rightly said that you combine both axial view and the sustentaculum telai view and the lateral view, three views, and then you'll get a perfect position for the guide wire. Yeah. yeah. And this is very important step. Because you see only a tip key there. Yeah. Point. But... And, and it is always advisable to go from posterior Mixed. to anterior because if you go from anterior to posterior, you may hit something. So, uh, now MIS calcaneus, essentially, you're doing the same thing but minimally invasive. So, your thought process about open reduction would also be quite clear when we uh, complete talking about MIS calcaneus. So, a 32 years old male who sustained fall from height, was brought in six hours to us. This was the CT scan. What next? Closed injury. Swelling is literally less. There are no wrinkles. Are you going to wait? Or you are going to go ahead and do MIS fixation? So this was on table image. Again, a manipulation, joystick manipulation put in. Reduction gain. Wires put in percutaneous plate also slid and this is how it was reduced percutaneously on day 2. So, this can be a story and this can be a story with worry. You could have problems of bone breakage. So, MIS has benefits and we were asked to write on to this into the world clinics of orthopedics and where we really wrote that it has fewer bone problems it is a faster healing. Early intervention can is possible. Early mobilization is possible. Speedy recovery and lesser hospitalization. And now so many studies have confirmed this. There are limitations of MIS. You have difficulty in gaining the reduction. It is technically demanding. There is a learning curve to it. And sender 4 is really, really very difficult to do with MIS. And delayed presentation, more than 3 weeks, I feel if the patient comes after 7 to 10 days, it is really very difficult to take it through the MIS. So, as I already mentioned, my algorithm, it is the sender 2 and sender 3, which I like to go ahead with MIS. Sender 4, obviously, either primary fusion or... Now, what position you give for MIS calcaneus? And there are multiple positions described in the literature. The one position is this. But this is not the position I use. Uh, because there is a question and I and this particular slide is going to, next slide is going to answer the question. So, I use a floppy lateral position. Because most often than not, you are obliged to put in a medial distractor. If you put in a lateral distractor, 
as you go on distracting in spite of you putting a lateral distractor in a strategic position where you are putting uh, the heel has gone into varus and you're putting your pin distractor pin into that angulation still when you correct it there is a tendency of heel to again go into the varus so it is in this kind of situation you will need to go with a medial distractor and it is always better to have a medial distractor than a lateral distractor so it is the floppy lateral position which would help you to do this surgery with a medial distractor this second position is an hanging ankle position now this has been uh, described by my friend uh, who has done a phenomenal work into calcaneus so this position imaging you know, as i already showed this video i'll skip it in a hanging ankle when you take an ap you see the lateral when you you know move the arm into lateral image you just have to dorsiflex the foot and you get the lateral axial image and for broaden view this is how you turn the cm and you get the broaden image so hanging view is also very very important and as i said for mis sustentacular view is very important otherwise there could be problem now what are those tools you must have when you're going to uh, practice mis calcaneus these are all the tools which you must have a stainment pin or a sans pin or a pusher or a bone punch a uh, hemostate of various sizes you also can require sometimes mixture a uh, t handle and various clamps these are your uh, uh, instruments which you must have you also should have lamina spreader intermediate distractor some uh, distractor clamps sometimes medium size femoral distractor and this is one more thing which i have in my armamentarium this is called push screw it is a 6.5 mm cancel a screw with the tip cut so it is blunted at the tip and you can use this screw uh, for mis correction i'll come to it how do i use it for mis now what is an approach for mis so you start your approach with marking you first mark the fibula then you mark the fourth metatarsal base and then from the tip of the fibula you go about a centimeter and a half or sometimes 2 3 cm and this is your incision for mis uh, uh, calcaneus if you find yourself struggling with this approach then okay you're struggling with this approach then you can uh, uh, extend your uh, incision a little little मैं ट्राई कर रहा हूँ हाँ हाँ चलेंगे आप तैयार हो जाइए जल्दी से ओके सो दिस वीडियो वुड शो हाउ यू पुट इन द इंसेशन एंड व्हेन यू पुटिंग द इंसेशन यू हैव टू ओह सॉरी देयर इस सम इश्यू सो व्हेन यू पुटिंग द इंसेशन यू मेक शर दैट यू प्रिजर्व द एंटीर ब्रांच ऑफ सूरन नाउ and you don't injure the peroneum so this is how you put in incision dilate it sometimes yeah this is the uh, uh, incision opened up peroneal tendons are in the base of the incision anterior branch of sural nerve goes here and sometimes i would like to put in a band k wire to retract the peroneum and retract the uh, superior structures this is how you put in the incision reduction is the single most element of significance when you talk of mis calcaneus now what are those reduction techniques as i said medial distraction is the most important technique such cases you would need to pass something on a medial side and distract it second is reduction of the medial fragment now 10 to 20% of the calcaneus fractures you will have your sustentacular fragment not into the position like in this compound in this calcaneus case the sustentacular fragment is lying like this so in such cases your mis maneuver would be first in form of repositioning of this medial sustentacular fragment you can do it with a punch and put in a k wire this k wire should go into the talus 
which later on can be removed. The another way of doing this reduction is to put in another medial distractor and distract it and then once it comes into the position you can pass a screw from sustentaculum into the body. Heel virus correction is by medial distractor and joystick. So this is how you put in the correction into action and this is the way this is the way I am doing the articular facet reduction. So sleeping a hemostate or a frayer or some instrument or sometimes you could use cocker or sometimes you can use mixture to reduce the articular facet. Now how do I use push screw? See this is the uh, kind of articular fragment depressed lying like this. So one push screw would like would, would push it up and the end would get the reduction and you can then fix it temporarily. So push screw is like a lift karate, Adnan Sami act, uh, lift karate act. So let's suppose this is the kind of a fracture, but this is the kind of CT scan. What you're going to do, you're going to plan your push screw uh, uh, reduction where you're going to put in an ST pin, which will depress the fragment and push screw would elevate the fragment so that articular facet comes into exit positioning. So that, that's a ST pin, that is a push screw going. Push screw is longer than the required. So part of it remains out and then you replace the push screw with the other screw. So this is how the reduction is in progress. Push screw has gone in and push screw is then replaced with the raft screw. Okay, and then you can put in your plate which is slid subcutaneously under the peroneum you are sliding in. Again, multiple facet fragment, if you are obliged to have this in a, uh, as a MIS, again a difficult job, but you can do it. So you trade a wire from medial side with the push screw, you elevate the fragment and then you thread wire again in, bring the other fragment and then push the cable. And this is how you could reduce multiple fragments. Calcate cuboid joint reduction. If you have a combination and you want to do MIS, how do you do that? You put in a distractor wires, one into the cuboid, one into the body of the calcaneus, distract it as well as push it with some pusher. And this is how you reduce the calcaneo cuboid joint and slid a plate from posterior to anterior if you want to span calcaneo cuboid joint for a badly shattered. Uh, fracture which have involved calcaneo cuboid joint. So this is one such case. Sometimes you have heel valgus into uh, calcaneous fracture. Very very few calcaneous fracture but you do have such calcaneous fracture where you have heel valgus. So for this correction of heel valgus you would need a lateral distractor plus a joystick into the body and you manipulate it into the heel valgus. The cases who have pre-existing flat foot, pre-existing plano valgus foot and then this when they sustained fall from height, they are the patients who have this heel valgus instead of heel varus. Uh, Kapanji technique can also be used to correct the heel valgus because it's not so easy to correct when you're doing MIS. You can put in multiple wires and you can correct the heel valgus. Now some case examples of MIS calcaneus. I have shown these pictures. This is the sender 2 and I have shown the case earlier in the early presentation. These are another examples of sender 2 MIS fixes. You can use any plate. You don't need a, a big fancy plates. Costly fancy plate may not be used. Now you even with this kind of a skin condition you could go ahead and do uh, uh, sender to fixation. So this is uh, that fancy plate uh, by I think Arthrex which has been used for MIS uh, sender 2. Sender 3, yes you can also uh, uh, do MIS with sender 3. This is the case example. This is how the closer looks. Uh, incision and exposition. <laughs> This is the fourth method of This is the problem to do that. From there, 
you go forward hello yes sir yes sir yes sir this is about 1.5 to 2.5 cm and then somebody in one presentation asked me that if you are committed to mis and then you are not able to get reduction what do you do so the answer to it is that you might have to uh, uh, extend your incision more posteriorly and little more anteriorly so this is the only bailout option if you are committed to mis and you are not able to get the reduction but the best thing is to just try and uh, push in uh, some k wires and make sure that you are able to reduce it then only you go ahead and do mis so this is the mis exposure and uh, on the on the upper portion is your uh, uh, superficial parent i mean sural nerves and tear branch and here is your uh, peronea it would be advisable that you dissect the peroneal sheath of the calcaneus and put in some instrument under it so that you are able to go and pass your plate under it so that is about uh, MIS calcaneus and now since we have talked about uh, general calcaneus fracture we have talked about open reduction inter fixes and we have talked about MIS uh, I am happy to take any questions if you have I don't see even any question into chat sir during the open reduction when you have taken out the articular uh, uh, facet fragment how do you identify which one is anterior posterior in that fragment especially when it is very comminuted yeah. <laughs> so you already missed uh, probably uh, my uh, part of that presentation i said that you uh, what you do is you really mark out the uh, fragment over the uh, mob yeah. and uh, label them so that your life is easy yes sir i mean how, how, even if you after putting it on the mob how mm -hmm. how to identify which one is an anterior and a posterior in that so you put it over the mob right yeah. the way you remove you put it over the mob and okay. then you draw it over the mob with a marking pen and yeah and Rajiv that bhai. Point, in drawing you write you you draw up down and to the posterior and Rajiv bhai. yeah his problem is that you have taken it from a distorted position so he will have to correlate it for you which one is anterior for he, he will have to correlate it with his pre-op study of the ct scan <laughs> right yeah, Absolutely. so he has to match both. Uh, uh, Great. Getting his problem. Yes, sir. Thing is turned ninety degree. Yeah, because in the fracture, the fragment can turn, uh, you know, any direction. Yeah. But then it is your CT scan which is going to guide. Yeah. So he has to study CT scan very, very carefully and imagine in three dimensions that where the fragments have gone. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So there is a question in the chat box. That for a standard calcaneal plate, how many minimum screw holes do you need to fill up? Uh, and also, there are the flanges. And are they of any use? Okay. So, uh, I feel that you should have at least two screws in the body and two screws into the anterolateral fragment. It's not necessary to make it a very stiff construct by filling every hole. But you fill enough holes so that you feel that it is stable. And there is no thumb rule that this many i mean like we have for the uh, uh, your locking plates that this many 40 percent 50 percent no, nothing like that i know of but uh, you put in till you have a reasonable stability uh for uh, can we use one third tubular plate for mis what will be the uh usable length how can we put all screws by two cm instance should we need additional that's a fantastic question so when you are doing MIS calcaneus, sometimes you have a need to fix articular facet and body fragment with the anterolateral fragment. Sometimes you have a need to fix anterolateral and articular fragment with the body fragment. And sometimes you have need to fix all three. So depending upon what you want to fix, your plate length would be. There are MIS plate available from the local Indian companies, which 
fixes only anterolateral for which is meant to fix anterolateral fragment with articular fragment. There are plates which are meant to fix posterior body fragment with the articular fragment. And there are imported plates as well as Indian plates which fixes all three. So, if you have to fix body with the articular facet fragment, an anterior process fragment is lying into good position or you can just fix it with a posterior anterior screw. You can use this semitubular plate. I have used a simple plate. I have cut the simple plate and I have used it. Now, the question is when you want to fill up the holes with an MIS through the plate from your 2 centimeter incision, you won't be able to fill up all the screws. You will have to put in small stab incisions and dilate the incision and put in your screw. There you are filling. There we all have been doing this sliding of the plate and putting the stab incisions. So, same way we will have to do it. Role of bone grafting in comminuted fracture. So, the combination mainly falls into the area which is not the weight bearing area. So, most often than not, the filling of the void is not being done. All those cases where you require to fill the void are the cases which are sender 4 cases, where probably so far as I am concerned, I am going to go ahead with a primary fusion. So, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, it, it, you don't have to bother whether you really need to do bone grafting or not. All those cases where you want that want to go ahead with bone grafting, they are like bag of bone cases and there I don't think that you're going to go ahead and settle down only with the open induction yeah. interface. Yeah. So Excuse me. These two questions by uh, uh, Dr. Vishal and somebody uh, are answered this. Yeah. Excuse please. me, sir. Uh, sir, with MIS approach, is it possible to address the anterior process fractures which are comminuted? And uh, another thing, I found it sometimes difficult to put a plate through the MIS approach because under the peronia, it is sometimes very difficult to put the plate in exact position where you want to put it. So, is there any trick to do it? Yeah. Or so, yeah, there are some companies who have really made a right angle instrument through which you can, you know. Uh, uh, you can slide that instrument underneath the paronia into the area where you really want to go. So, once you have that instrument creating a track, you can put in your plate into that direction and your hemostate would also be able to guide. Hemostate put proximally or distally where you are sliding the plate would also be able to guide the placement of the plate. Sometimes, if you are really you know, not comfortable doing that, you may put in a uh, incision uh, onto the, suppose you want to put in a plate between anterior process and between the uh, articular facet fragment, you can put in an incision into the anterior uh, articular facet. I mean, you can put in an incision at the anterior uh, anterolateral fragment and these two incisions, when you just have to go ahead with like a railroad uh, mechanism where you are, you're putting one hemostate from uh, anterolateral approach, one hemostate from the uh, articular area under the peroneum and when they match, again you can slide the plate over it. Uh, there are other techniques described in the literature that you can put in a thread and you can pull it, something like that. This all you can try. Uh, but the question, the but, yeah, please. Negi so, have all senior people who are more experienced than me sir, should always sir, add on to. Sir, what is your post-op Regime for iso one isolated one side cal calcaneum and for bilateral. When okay. do you allow it, Biri? Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm I'm coming to that, sir. And how long you uh, protect it with a slab? Yeah, I'm, I'm just coming to that. I'm just coming to that. So uh, answering that uh, question, which has remained halfway. Uh, so this is the way you slide it. But when you have a articular facet which is very much comminuted, that of the uh, calcaneus facet of the, uh, I mean, the cuboid facet of the calcaneus when it is very much comminuted. In these kind of situation, you will have to first make those multiple fragments to be, uh, you, you will have to convert into one fragment. So, there were instances where I had to take in a small incision at the anterior process of the calcaneus. So, it is that anterior process of the calcaneus which is projecting out, upwards, and laterally. 
so there is the place where you can put in one of the k wire and you can pass that k wire going directly into the interior facet of the calcaneus and over which you can put in one screw which would compress the anterolateral fragment or the anterior facet which is uh, which is aligning with the cuboid and then you can slide the plate does that answer your question doctor yes sir yes sir yes. thank so, you so sometimes you have to put in one or two uh, screws to compress the comminuted anterior articular uh, uh, process of the calcaneus okay uh, uh, then there is a question on to post operative care post operatively i give a baloney splintage this baloney splintage is kept for about 3 to 4 weeks and then i start mobilizing them with a crepe bandage non weight bearing uh no question of weight bearing for 12 months by about for 12 weeks so 10 to 12 weeks is the time where we allow weight bearing uh bilateral fractures bilateral fractures again by 3 weeks you can remove this splintage and you can start mobilizing them uh and i am going to discuss on to bilateral calcaneus fractures in my next presentation uh did you notice any non union of calcaneus yes non union of calcaneus is also common and you should be thinking about it you should be uh, having high index of suspicion and i am going to show you the case where i encountered the non union of calcaneus any experience with mini external fixation being manufactured by victor orkan uh i have had no experience with the mini external fixator of uh, for calcaneus but for a compound injury you may use a js and some k wires uh, to temporarily just stabilize it but not as a definitive treatment modality i have used i have ever used the uh, external fixator uh any other questions on to uh uh how in sender one where by only a percutaneous screw or stem and pin is applied okay see essentially you do percutaneous fixation or you do open or you do mis the principle of reduction remain the same you are making sure that your medial sustentacular frag fragment is in the position then you making sure that your articular facet fragment is reduced you're making sure that your heel comes into neutral position and is not shortened and then you're putting your plate to neutralize everything so this principle remains the same so either you do it percutaneously or you do it open in the fixation you do the same way you do it uh there is excuse me another question another question is a question yeah please uh sir in sometimes in tongue type uh, fractures of the posterior facet uh, there is necrosis of the skin in the uh, posterior area so um, how do you address this uh, can it be done percutaneously only or do you combine it with a sinus tarsi approach along with a percutaneous uh, screws and what is the direction of your screws in those cases right so this presentation is going to answer all these questions so do i start with this this is on to extra articular calcaneus fracture Yes. So, so uh, uh, this kind of fractures, uh, I mean, this is the one which you are questioning about, right? So, yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, uh, should we wait till I finish this presentation, and probably it would answer your question. If not, we can always deliberate on it. Yes. So, I hope there are no questions on to open induction interfixation and uh, uh, into. on to mis calcaneus i don't even see anything in the chat box okay so do we all think that these injuries are innocuous obviously not may it be sustentacular fragment frac fracture may it be a medial tuberosity of calcaneus fracture or may it be a big type of a calcaneus fracture so look at this the kind of complications this fractures they give rise to so somebody asked me the question about uh, the posterior skin issues so these are very common with this fractures so they are not innocuous and this injuries can lead to disastrous soft tissue complication and abnormal pressure effects 
So all these injuries, they are extra articular fractures. This is a sustained articular fracture and they should not be neglected. So that is where the stock is coming, extra articular calcaneus fractures. There are six areas of calcaneus where extra articular calcaneus fracture can come into play. One is anterior process. Another is body. Third is tuberosity. Fourth is sustained tentaculum. Five is posterior process. And six is the heel spot. And let's take all this one after another. Extra articular fractures. If you talk of adult, 25% of the adult calcaneal fractures are extra articular. One third. But if you talk about pediatric population, half of their calcaneal fractures are having extra articular of extra articular variety. Again, when you talk of extra articular calcaneal fracture, male dominance is less pronounced, unlike intra articular calcaneal fractures. And there are two basic varieties, or you can say two basic kind of the forces giving rise to these fractures and two basic varieties, avulsion type or a compression type. Either there is avulsion which has created this fracture or there is a compression which has created this fracture. And majority of these fractures can be treated conservatively. Now let's start with one after another. So the first is tuberosity fracture. It's an avulsion injury. Tuberosity fracture could be this is the classification 1A, undisplaced, big type of fracture, you treat conservatively. But in an equinus, you are going to position your foot. This is again body kind of a fracture. This is avulsion fracture. But this is the 1C, which is displaced, big avulsion with TA rupture, very bad. Lee et al. gave classification in form of type 1 being simple extra articular avulsion. Type 2, big fracture. Type 3, infrabursal avulsion involving the uh, superior fibers of Achilles tendon. And type 4 is big, but a small triangular fragment involving deep fibers of Achilles tendon. These are for the avulsions. Now, tuberosity fracture, it definitely risks your posterior soft tissues and tendo Achilles. It requires emergent operative management. And why surgery is indicated? Because there is marked displacement of the tuberosity. It, there would be loss of Achilles function with weakness of plantar flexion. And there could be soft tissue breakdown or pressure related ischemia leading into soft tissue problems and later death plastic reconstruction. The high risk complications are soft tissue breakdown, failure of fixes and pain with shoe wear. So, how do you treat this patient? Obviously, these patients are to be operated into a lateral position with knee inflexion to release to relax gastrocnemius. Direct posterior approach is what you can take, or you can take MIS approach, like I have taken in this case. K wire or an ST pin to be used as joystick, and you reduce the fragment and then put in your K wires. Most important aid to reduction is plantar flexion of the ankle. And if the case is old, you might have to go for open tendo Achilles release before you fix these fractures. So that's a plantar flexion. Sometimes you need a traction suture in tendo Achilles. If the fragment is very much comminuted or bad, you might have to use a traction suture in there. And gastrocrisis. If it is little old, you might have to go for gastrocrisis. So what you do once you reduce it, put in temporarily spanning K wires, which are multiple K wires. And mind you, these K wires are not into the same direction. Because you want to put in the screws or plate or tension bend, where you want to cross the opposite surface, that is must. And secondly, you are aiming the screws at different directions to uh, really increase the pullout strength. And you immobilize this patient into equinus. Now, this is what is the trick to treat these cases. Don't forget, accurate reduction plus correct rotation is a must for this patient over and above in, uh, doing a reduction into plantar flexion and immobilization into plantar flexion. Evaluation of tendo Achilles tightness in the opposite team is also very important because if you really evaluate opposite side, you know that what is the tightness into the tendo Achilles and accordingly, if at all you are, uh, you, you want to lengthen, you are knowing that you don't want to make your 
this type and this tend to actually is more weaker or very much weak in comparison to the opposite side now if you have a compound wound at the posterior aspect together with the fracture you have to do extension at the corners so that you can really go ahead up and down so this is how uh, uh, a picture of a compound injury looks like you need to take special care in the cases where diabetes mellitus neuropathy and osteoporosis very very important and when you are immobilizing this patient it is important that you don't put pillow you don't put your pillow under the heel but you need to put your pillow under the calf that is a must complication could be poor fixation which would need implant extraction and revision fixation like we did in this one of the case you could have complication in form of bone union which would require to be treated with exosectomy and reattachment of tendo achilles back to the uh, heel this much would be excised and tendo achilles would get off the bone and then you will have to reattach it to the calcaneus with a suture anchor soft tissue problems someone asked me the question how do you manage the soft tissue problems uh, the most important to your help is vac vacuum assisted dressing followed by a closer or a small uh, skin graft and if that is not amenable then i think you will have to go for flap the various flaps which act here are either a local rotation flap or an abductor hallucis or abductor digiti minimi base flap or a peroneal artery flap so this was that case where the implants were also longer projecting out and impinging on a medial side with exposed implant and this compound when this wound which was then treated with two or three back applications and once the granulation came in we rotated a local rotation flap and this is how it was covered malunion plus infection is a real catastrophe then you will need to go in with the uh, uh, debridement followed by plus followed by excision of this reattachment of tendo achilles tendon and a flap coverage or such cases where you have malunion infection plus tibialis posterior rupture you will need to take everything you want to do for malunion plus you will have to bring the uh, tendo achilles down by proximal tendo achilles lengthening and and uh, bring that down over the calcaneus so the next extra articular fracture we encounter is posterior process or posterior tuberosity fracture which is a shear which could be shear injury or it could be compression injury and there it is divided into medial process or the lateral process the most important vital is the medial posterior process or medial tuberosity fracture calcaneus so medial tuberosity calcaneus fracture if it is in position you can treat it conservative but if it is displaced mind you this is the weight bearing area you will have to treat it by surgery and how do you operate this put in a small medial incision 3 to 5 cm just parallel to the sole of the foot and you should be watchful not to injure the nerves and the plantar skin skin and then you reduce the fracture in plantar flexion fix it with temporary k y replace them with the screws or bioabsorbable pin or suture anchor or sometimes intraosseous sutures so uh, this was the one uh, medial tuberosity fracture treated with screws but here in such fragment you will have to treat it with uh, intraosseous sutures which would go to the opposite side uh, picture courtesy by dr kishore dudhat it is his case you know he uses a prayer to reduce it and then this prayer reduces it you know, he passes a wire and this is how the clinical picture looks like and that's the final reduction and this is the screw which is going from medial tuberosity to the lateral wall of calcaneus uh, one of my case male of 33 had acute trauma of 2 days yet severe pain at the heel burning tingling numbness and then he had to be operated very next day we operated him and we reduced the medial tuberosity together with the calcaneus fracture and fix it like this posterior body is an fracture is an avulsion injury it could be a vertical one or epiphyseal avulsion in pediatric age group and pediatric age group posterior body avulsion is very common 
it can be mistaken with apophysitis, apophysitis if fracture is not displaced it is treated with a baloney plaster for four weeks followed by mobilization hill spur could have avulsion injury and if the hill spur has avulsion injury it is very very common after shockwave therapy which gives auto decompression and relief of hill pain that's how shockwave works sometimes you need to treat hill spur fracture conservatively uh, with the rest and immobilization for three to four weeks. And the last but not the least is sustentaculum talli fracture, which is an avulsion kind of injury. This fracture is associated with other injuries also. So you should be looking up at the foot and ankle axilla and CT scan to rule out other injuries. Uh, in an axilla, you would see irregularity at subternal joint. In an axial image, some irregularity you would see at the sustentaculum and in an axial image you will see displaced sustentaculum talli. This is how you diagnose it. And CT scan is almost inevitable to really have idea about the sustentaculum fragment. Indications, why surgery is indication? You want to prevent subtalar stiffness and subtalar arthritis and you want to prevent hind foot virus following malunion of this fracture. So you would put in a uh, incision in the line of TBRS posterior tendon. This incision has to go down and you would put in it into the supine position with a bump under gluteal region, a tunique and head lamp sometimes is necessary. You uh, put in a straight medial approach under the TBRS posterior. TBRS posterior and FDL are detected dorsally. FHL and neurovasculars are detected plantarward. Again, this is this approach has got multiple windows. Sometimes I am I have seen that I have to go between tibialis posterior above and FDL below. Sometimes I have to go uh, with this tibialis posterior and FDL above and neurovasculars below. And if the fracture is comminuted, it is extending beneath, then you may have to go. Uh, uh, to have a look at your plate between neurovasculars and flexor hollicis longus. So you put in a K-wire or sunspin as a joystick, medial distractor is required and then you fix it with a screw or a mini plate. And as I showed earlier, you might have to go in for distraction aided reduction in such cases. So, and you can notice here that over and above this, there was a fracture talus which was also fixed with the screws. Now, the Tips and tricks for the sustentacular fracture is you may have to use a pointed reduction clamp to reduce it. You need to be aware about tendon and now entrapment by displaced fragments. You have to use a low profile construct and use of position screws when you have a combination. And sometimes when there is a combination, you may have to keep a medial distractor for some few weeks. You need to make sure that you are preserving the attachment of the deltoid ligament. You need to address associated talar fractures or subtalar dislocation. Even in this case, over and above sustentaculum talli fracture, I also had a fracture of anterior process of calcaneus, which was fixed, as well as there was a fracture uh, of the talus on a lateral side, which was fixed. In all unstable situation, as I said earlier, you have to continue in an unstable situation, you have to continue your x fix Implant extraction, if there is there are signs and symptoms of impingement and surgical excision and early aggressive rehab for a very small peripheral fractures is also described in the literature. Complication of sustentaculum talli fracture could be malunion, non-union, subtalar stiffness, post-traumatic arthritis, and hind foot virus. Now, uh, this cases of sustentaculum fracture like this requires to be fixed like this. And these are the uh, post-operative wounds like. A bilateral sustentaculum fracture case by one of the aggressively upcoming foot and ankle surgeon from Indore, Dr. Manish. This case had a right as well as left-sided sustentacular fractures. This were the CT scan images and he did both in one sitting. This were the kind of incisions and this were the screws which he pushed in for sustentacular talli fracture. 
the most important thing is to push your screws from anterior to posterior because if you are pushing your screw anteriorly there you have a little leverage you need to go a little posteriorly when you're putting your screw into 20 degree plantar flexion direction so that you are not hitting this sustainer this subternal joint the last one is the anterior process fracture which could be a avulsion as well as compression injury and it is seen in 8 to 13 percent of all calcaneus fractures and this is one of the most commonly misdiagnosed as ankle sprain if forcible plantar flexion inversion is the mode of injury patient would have an avulsion type of uh, calcaneus anterior process calcaneus fracture this is very common to be treated conservatively but if the mode of injury is forced dorsiflexion and eversion then you will have a compression kind of a, a injury and this would be more comminuted and this would be kind of a more uh, aggressive variety where you need to go in and fix it there could be additional injury to talus navicular cuboid calcaneus and ligament injury you should be watchful about it Calcaneo navicular coalition is easily is, is seen frequently with this injury and you should not miss on to that. Now there is a, another important differential diagnosis with this anterior process calcaneus fracture is avulsion of extensor digitorum brevis muscle and this is difficult to distinguish with anterior process fracture on clinical examination. You should have a high degree of suspicion. Your imaging is very important dorsal plantar view of foot ap view of foot reverse oblique view of, view of foot which we call a medial uh, external oblique view of the foot and ct scan would be important and again if it is a ed bevels and you manage it conservatively with a rest and splinter for two weeks now anterior process fracture i i told earlier detection is the key and you treat it conservatively with short cast but if there is a large displaced fragment which involves 30% or more of the calcaneo cuboid joint, then you need to fix that fragment. If this fragment of anterior process of calcaneus is associated with other fractures in the foot, then you need to address it. And if it is a non-unit, you need to address it surgically with excision. Now, this was one case where I had a comminuted navicular fracture and the force exited laterally with a big uh, anterior process calcaneus fracture which was treated and this are, this are the radiology i mean this are the ct images and look at this it's a big uh, uh, anterior process uh, fragment so it was fixed with a screw and neutralized with a plate and this is how uh, it looked Anterior process of calcaneus fixes, where this was the navicular fixes together with it. Another case, now this unfortunately was my own pathologist who just went to somebody else when he sustained fall during tracking and anterior process calcaneus fracture as well as the sustained aculum tali fractures were missed. And it was after three months that I had to operate him. This was incision on a lateral side where I opened, explored, and this was the anterior process calcaneus fracture, which was reduced and fixed with the screw. And again, lateral process talus was also fixed with the screw. And he also had a sustained aculum fracture, which was fixed with the screw. And body plus combination could be in form of compression injury. Management is conservative, except you have a wide displacement of the body of calcaneus you need to go in and do percutaneous fixation, like in this case, like this case. So that was about the extra articular calcaneus fractures, which we do see, but many times we neglect them. Any question, any confusion, any comments onto this? If you all are tired i can stop here if you want me to go ahead i can go ahead talking about complex calcaneus fracture we should talk about bilateral fractures we should talk about 
Center 4, which will talk about uh, neuropathic calcaneus fracture. Uh, so, should we go ahead? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Five yes, minutes of interaction ahead. would. Yeah, interaction. Yeah, please. So, if if you have any questions, uh, you can ask. So, uh, my question to you is, please. Uh, in the open reduction and internal fixation, your steps are very well uh, understood. But do you remove the articular fragment in all cases, or now with your experience, you are doing it sparingly, only in difficult cases? I have noticed that very few cases you can just get out without removing it. And they are mainly tongue type of fractures. Okay. Right. But otherwise, if you remove it, your life becomes very easy. You want to reduce the medial sustentacular fragment with the body fragment. And that is very, very difficult many times. So you need to push in a laminar spreader inside and manipulate it together with you need to manipulate it with the pain in the calcaneus so unless you do this uh, really do not you okay. know, come so okay. most often than not i have ended up uh, removing the removing particular the facet fragment okay. thank you sir uh, okay uh, any other question uh, Sir, how do you put in your laminar spreader? Is it in the superior or inferior or uh, antero posterior, depending upon the fracture? Or... Oh, that's a great question. So you have your sustentaculum talli fragment here. You have a body fragment here, and they're just lying in front of you when patient is into the lateral position. So your laminar spreader is superior inferior between between the medial sustentacular fragment and posterior tuberosity fragment. So you are going between two with one and then with the limb lying in between these two fragment. And when you open, this is how they open. I think you are able to see my hand. Yes. Yeah, this is yes. how they open. But that is a very, very important instrument uh, you have to have on table you have to have on table okay sir thank you and, uh, sir uh, with a sinus tarsi approach can you visualize the posterior facet articular surface till uh, where till the very end of the uh, till the very medial end and sometimes yeah. also we uh, see that there is combination at uh, cartilage delamination so how do you address it uh, when you see it uh, after the uh, after the approach yeah so this is a fantastic question so when you are doing sinus tarsi approach, mind you, tunica is a must, and a fine tip suction is also a must, because and bright illumination. These three things you must have: bright illumination, fine tip suction, and a tunica, because you really want to see in the depth. You have a very small approach, and through which you want to see right into depth of the uh, medial uh, fragment. So it is your suction, your bright light, and your tourniquet, which gives you bloodless field that you can really do. The, suppose you are, you, you, are, you are not comfortable, you can put in a pin into the calcaneus and manipulate calcaneus into into inversion so you are able to see it better you can even put in a laminar spreader between unreduced fragment of the body and articular facet and talus and talus and you can distract it so that you can uh, you can see the articular surface you can see the articular surface my friend john con who is a big time trauma guy what he does yes. he puts in laminar spreader <laughs> between the posterior tuberosity and posterior aspect of talus and ankle. And he distracts laminar spread. This is a fantastic trick he told me and he taught me that putting, so 
I have a foot with me. Okay. I hope you are able to see the foot. Model, yes, sir. Bone model. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what John does is he puts in a laminar spreader, one arm here and one arm here. And he distracts it. So once this is distracting and reduction is done. Oh, someone will have to close the mic, please. Okay, so once this is distracted, he puts in an ST pin. He makes sure that his ST pin doesn't go medially. He puts in an ST pin from calcaneus, which goes into the ankle. Okay. Which gives this distracted. You got this point? No. I see, no, I sir. See, no. No, sir. Okay. That so I'll pull out a picture. I will pull out a picture where he has he, he, and how he puts in the posterior pin which goes from calcaneus to the anchor to the tibia after distracting it with the lamina spreader posterior distraction so which also helps you into this reduction as well as visualization and answering the last part of the question if i see that the articular cartilage is loose if the, some part of it is lost you sharply excise it and you can put in one or two micro drills you can do micro fracture of that particular area yes sir okay in any, oh, oh, oh. any other question mahek can you just mute everybody's audio i mean at least audio of the person where some yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can do that. Yes, sir. I'll do that. Please do that. Okay. Uh, any more question on to uh, calcaneus? Am I is open? Uh, sir, uh, we have seen in follow-up, like patient is coming after six months of uh, calcaneus fracture. Whether it be maybe, uh, maybe due to maybe uh, due to uh, calcaneus malunion or something, Patient complains of pain while uh, walking during the uh, lift off, lift off phase of the gait, and also patient complains of pain uh, at the insertion site of the peroni. So, any particular reason for that? So, this this case is, to my viewpoint, must be having some lateral impingement of peroni. So, yes. uh, these are the typical symptoms, and they also find themselves having discomfort. When they go down the stairs, and they also find discomfort when they walk on an uneven surface. What could be the cause? Is, uh, is it due to malunion or something? Yeah, yeah. So it is the blast of the lateral wall, blast of the lateral wall, which is responsible for peroneal tendonitis or tenosynovitis. And that is why Elizaro does not work good with the calcaneus fracture. First, with Elizaro, you can definitely get the good height of the uh, calcaneus. You can get uh, bring calcaneus into varus. With Elizaro, you can also restore the length between the cuboid and the calcaneus. But it is this lateral wall blast, which would be little little trickier to treat uh, with Elizaro because if you want to pass in a wire, from the lateral to medial, you're going to encounter quite important structure on a medial side. So blast of the lateral wall cannot be reduced. Why do we put in plate into MIS calcaneus? Mostly it is the lateral wall blast of the calcaneus, which we want to force to go in. It is for that, that most often they not be put in a plate in MIS calcaneus. When will you do fusion is the question by someone that again I'm going to answer when we talk about uh, uh, the uh, malunion of calcaneus. So do we go ahead with complex calcaneus fractures? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So Bilateral fractures. Negi sir, hi Abne sir. Sir wanted to elaborate me on bilateral fractures. So
So uh, many times you encounter bilateral fractures. Now fractures like this, you know, right and the left side. Uh, these are mainly people who sustain fall from height that they develop this bilateral fractures and look at the kind of skin conditions they have. And the question is when you are addressing bilateral fracture, it is not necessary to address both of them at the same time. Uh, but if you do it at the same time, your life is easy because whenever you're doing one side, you have to put the patient into the lateral position, which gives a lot of pressure onto the other side and a lot of edema and blisters can appear. So uh, many people like to operate both of them together. So patient position would be prone and you have one bump which you can use for the side which you are operating and then you can put the bump onto the next side. And that is how you would be clearing the other limbs obscure shadow. And Excel images, this is how you can tilt the CM and see the Excel image while you are doing dorsiflexion. For lateral image, it's simple. You just have to turn your CM into the lateral position and this foot is lifted so you will be able to see the lateral image. For a broaden image, again, you're doing uh, uh, this kind of maneuver to see the broaden image. And this bilateral calcaneus case, uh, plate, fixation was done on one side and uh, fusion was done on other side where this plate was for the calcaneocuboid fusion from this was for the subtalar fusion and yeah this was for the calcaneocuboid fusion this was for the subtalar fusion screw plus the plate so it is tender four calcaneous fractures which has generated controversies whether to fuse it or to fix it and this brings me to one of the study which we were asked to present at AOFS as well as AFAS. Bilateral standard four calcaneous fractures. Should we be doing fixation or should we be doing primary fusion? So what we did over two years, we studied 12 consecutive cases which we treated. So that means 24 calcaneous fracture over a period of two years. And the follow-up study was for two years where what we did, all right-sided fractures, we treated with open induction internal fixes. And all left-sided fractures, we treated with primary fusion. So, bag of bones, center four fracture, uh, right side, open induction internal fixes. Left side, primary fusion. And then in ORIF group, as well as in fusion group, we have a similar rate of wound complication. Uh, but no deep wound infection. ORIF group returned to work at six months with persistence of some pain and difficulty. Fusion group turned faster to the work. And secondary procedures were uncommon in fusion group, but they were common into uh, ORIF group where we had to go in and do subtle fusion at the end of three, eight, and 26 months in three of our cases. So ORIF group, AOFS score was 62. Fusion group, the score was 70. And then we dry, draw a questionnaire to every patient in a vernacular language. And the inference was that the primary fusion for these kind of population were the only earning member of the family who are a manual labor worker. For them, it was less painful, more cost effective, and a final operation where they returned to work early and with a better AOFS score. And every patient who underwent primary fusion on the left side, they loved their left side than their right side. So we inferred that the primary fusion in our kind of population for center four fracture is more preferred by our patient if they love it as a one procedure than a primary uh, fixation. Now some five bilateral cases, uh, now this, was a case, I think, a suicidal jump or fall from height. And look at this, you know, bag of bones. And you cannot reconstruct this. And even if you reconstruct this, this patient, until you do fusion, subtle fusion, they will never be back into action. So this were the kind of skin condition, contused skin, and then right side 
this was the CT scan, literally bag of bones and we went in and we did primary subtalar fusion with a iliac crest bone graft, filled it and packed the other bone graft and this is how this, now these are difficult cases but you should try to restore uh, congruity of calcaneus as much as possible. This was on the right side. On the left side, this where the CT image is very bad. This was how it was operated. Again, gap was filled with the bone grafts and fusion was done and fixation with a plate. So this was about I think when it healed on the right and left side. This was on the right and left side. The bilateral case again here on the left side we did ORIF, on the right side we did primary fusion. Another case where on the right side we did primary fusion like this again very bad cases the implants were removed where on the left side we did ORIF. So we concluded with our study that till the time we have strong evidence based study which favor fixation over fusion in center four kind of fractures, I would continue to offer primary fusion to all center four calcaneus fracture cases. Again, it's difficult, but I think our patients, they love single operation. They love to go back to work faster. And if you don't operate, if you don't fuse them, they always continue to have pain, difficulty, limb. And unless you fuse them later date, they never go back to their work. So, this is the video of primary fusion of this video demonstrates primary fusion for Sanders type 4 fracture patient is a young adult male who sustained fall from third floor and had bilateral fracture calcaneus at the end of 25 days this was the picture at the lateral aspect and this is how foot and ankle looked on the medial aspect. If we see the x-rays of this patient, x-rays show severe combination, bone loss, angulation and deformation on both the sides. Look at the loss of the bone and the void created at the subtalar joint. CT scan in this patient also confirms bag of bone fracture calcaneus. Patient is positioned like that for acute calcaneus fracture in a lateral decubitus position. Incision is same based onto the lateral calcaneal artery with a vertical limb and a horizontal limb which is connected at the apex with a gentle apical curve. As you go on lifting flap subperiosteli, you first encounter the lateral wall. You also have a talus facing in front of you. Next step is retraction of this flap with wire and passage of a ST pin into the tuberosity of calcaneus. Lateral wall is sharply dissected and is hinged down. K wire on a T handle is passed into the depressed fragment and a Hinterman's distractor is also used which is slid over two K wires, one in talus and another into the posterior tuberosity of the calcaneus. After this, the opening of the Hinterman's distractor at the same time, correction of the depressed subtalar articular fragment is being done. As it is being done, you would note that the heel height is restored and the subtalar articular facet fragment also comes beneath the talus. The next step is preparation of the subtalar joint by removal of articular cartilage. Also talar preparation is done and then the both the prepared surfaces is drilled to 
augment the vascularity and attention is driven towards ipsilateral iliac crest to have the graft which is tricortical and is equal to the length or the height of the hill. This graft is prepared with K wire perforations. Before putting the graft, this is how the void looks like. This void is then pushed in with a graft which is positioned like this. The void which is still remaining is filled up with bone grafts which are taken from iliac crest. The next step is fusion of the subtalar joint which is done by passing one or two cannulated cancellous or fully threaded cannulated screws. The screws are pushed from the non weight bearing area of the heel right up to the talar neck. The next step spanning posterior tuberosity of the heel right up to anterolateral fragment of the calcaneus. Closure is done in two layers. Postoperative images at the end of six weeks looks like this. So this was this video. So that was about bilateral calcaneus fracture and primary fusion for slender four. Uh, we'll go to the next variety of calcaneus fracture where you require multiple fusions. Not only the subtalar fusion, but you also need something else than the subtalar fusion. Look at this. Male of 42 fall from height, bilateral fracture calcaneus. Uh, patient also had a uh, fracture spine, vitals were stable, and then this was the clinical picture. This was after traction and manipulation by the index surgeon, and then this is how you fix the uh, calcaneus temporarily, and then this patient was referred to me after 16 days what to do for this case, and then the CT scan showed this kind of uh, images. And this patient was then taken for surgery. This is how a lateral extensile approach, which was also extended downwards to cover the downwards and anteriorly to cover the calcaneal cuboid joint. This is how fragments were manipulated. And this patient underwent a uh, use of talonavicular plus subtalar joint. This is how the final image looked. And this was after implant extraction. Sometimes you have calcaneus fracture with compartment syndrome. Now, in this patient, patient was a 17-year-old girl who had a fall from height, brought six hours after injury with very tense swelling, tingling, numbness, and passive extension of the toes was very much painful. She was diagnosed to have by a compartment syndrome of fit with bilateral calcaneus fracture along with undisplaced navicular fracture on the right and first metatarsal head on the right side. So this is the kind of uh, skin, tense skin looked and this were the x-rays. So emergency fasciotomy was done, uh, medial uh, plantar and the dorsal incision and then this was later on treated with the fixation of fractures and coverage uh, of the incision. And then she went back even to the dancing. That's a picture of she dancing on the stage. So literature said that 17% of fractures calcaneus out had compartment syndrome in the study by Meyerson. And then he said that compartment syndrome of foot does occur after calcaneus fracture and fasciotomy is effective treatment to prevent long-term sequelae. Uh, this was the another study uh, which was published in, in, in uh, Journal of Emergency Medicine in 2012. He said that the consequences of untreated compartment syndrome including clawing of the lesser toes, stiffness, chronic pain, motor weakness, urovascular function and fixed deformities these are the consequences of untreated compartment syndrome. And in their study, 10% of patients with calcaneus fractures 
developed compartment syndrome of the foot and they also advocated early release of this. The another study in foot and ankle surgery in 2013 said that 10% of their cases had missed compartment syndrome and their functional score was significantly lower than those where the compartment syndrome was not there. All missed compartment syndrome cases in this study were of standard type 3 and 4. And they said that you should be warranting close monitoring for development of compartment syndrome. Now, this was a case with a very bad <coughs> soft tissues and patient developed compartment syndrome and in emergency room, the fasciotomy was done. This was a case, I think, sent to me by somebody. So that's about a compartment calcaneus fracture with compound, uh, uh, with comminuted calcaneus fracture with compartment syndrome. We discussed about the bilateral fractures as a compli complex calcaneus fracture. We discussed about center four. We discussed about calcaneus fracture with compartment syndrome. Now we are going to discuss compound calcaneus fractures. So now this kind of a compound calcaneus fracture, obviously the treatment here in would be a baloney amputation but cases like this where you have a fall and a medial bone your management is debridement and get the CT scan and then later date go ahead and fix this everything heals and patient goes back to the activity case of an open calcaneus with a medial bone now when you have such a medial bone you have a window of opportunity to push this fracture back and fix it temporarily with talus. So that this patient had a sustained tacular fragment, body was uh, fractured into two fragments, and there was a lateral wall fragment. And this is how the stage one, this uh, sustained tacular fragment was reduced and fixed temporarily with the K-wire. And then in the stage two, a definitive management of calcaneus fracture was done like this. So what are all decision-making criteria when you are managing an open calcaneus fracture? There are four criteria to decide about your management for open calcaneus fracture. The first criteria is the severity and type of injury, which is directly related to the rate of complications. Now, this was one study by Albridge et al. They said that 90% of the wounds are on the medial side. So, the second criteria is location of the bone. Whether the wound is located medially, laterally, plantarwards, or posteriorly. And it is the location of the bone which decides the criticality or the end result of compound calcaneus fracture. Cases with the medial wound, though they are very common and they are very good, you just have to manage it, you have to debride it. If you have a window of doing some fixes and do fixes and do plastic coverage on a medial side and once everything settles down, skin condition is pliable, you need to go from lateral side to fix the fracture. The lateral wounds have a poor prognosis because these wounds are directly located where you want to put in your incision. Posterior wounds are rare. They may be associated with tendoachylis injury. Have got moderately poor prognosis but the plantar wounds have the worst outcome because most often than not they are going to end up with amputation here at all they came in in their study and they what they mentioned that plantar wounds had worse outcome with five cases of baloney amputation in their study of 24 compound calcaneus fractures very at all came up with this third criteria, whether you have a window of fracture reduction and fixation through the bone. And it is very, very important that you have to look for whether your wound in a compound calcaneus fracture is providing an opportunity to reduce and temporarily stabilize an open fracture or not. Because you may not get, if you lose that window, you may not get the opportunity for four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. Uh, Professor Dillon from our own uh, uh, country did a study and they say that primary amputation has a role in non-salvageable limb for management of open calcaneus fractures. So the fourth criteria to look for is can limb be salvaged. So four criteria, 
severity of the soft tissue injury, location of the wound, whether you have an opportunity to fix or stabilize the fracture through that wound, and the fourth criteria, can you salvage limb or not? Now, this I already showed you, that medial fracture which was fixed and it went on to good outcome. But you need aggressive stage management for open calcaneus fracture, which is again another study by Mehta et al. who came in with the statement. Now, how do you manage compound calcaneus through a stage protocol? Primary emergency ma management in emergency room is followed by aggressive debridement and look whether you could stabilize some part of the fracture, reduce some prominent bone pieces, put in an external fixation plus K wires and then going for the plastic reconstruction. Once everything settles down, you go for definitive bony reconstruction. Now, look at this case. This patient was advised baloney amputation. And we went in and we did total calcanectomy this patient of this, for this patient. And everything healed. This kind of brace was given. And patients really do very well with total calcanectomy. So, you do give a thought to total calcanectomy when you are dealing with the compound calcaneus fracture. Now, this is that same patient who is walking without any support after total calcaneotomy and mind you he is 70 years old man who is walking up he can walk for a few distance without support for a longer distance he requires stick so when he goes out of the home he uses stick in the home he do not uh, he is not required to use the stick and so that's what we also uh, uh, also public published that total calcaneotomy could be a good option so if for uh, a neuropathic ulcer for compound calcaneus fracture, do give a thought about it. And the last part of this talk is on to neuropathic calcaneus fracture. Neuropathic calcaneus fracture, you have to be very much aggressive into them for the cases who are young patient, for the cases where that's the only working limb. If these fractures go on to fragmentation and where the pressure on this neuropathic foot comes in an uneven uh, uh, manner they can break open and they can go into baloney amputation. Now, this was a trivial trauma in a diabetic patient who had a chief uh, who had this kind of a neuropathic fracture of posterior tuberosity of calcaneus, and this was managed with a uh, 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 this kind of uh, anchor fixation, and this gave way, and this could then be treated with simple baloney. Uh, orthosis because these patients they have a low demand. So tuberosity fractures can be treated conservatively if I mean you try to fix it. If the fixation fails, you can give charcoal restraining orthotic walker or A4 to this patient. But cases like this, this was a 35 years old male who had a type 1 diabetes, neuropathic calcaneus fracture on the right side with baloney amputation on the left side. And such patients definitely requires fixation, fusion of the calcaneus fracture. Otherwise, the only working limb may, be, may go for baloney amputation. So he was treated with a subtalar fusion, corrective subtalar fusion, and he went on to heal. These are the broadened views. And he is now on his own uh, with the uh, baloney processes on the other side. and. Uh, normal, uh, simple A4 on the operated side. The another case is a young 25 years old male, type 1 diabetes mellitus with neuropathy. And he had this bad fracture. If you see, this is also going towards the calcaneocuboid joint. So this is the incision. I've gone distal and I've also gone upwards to fire at the calcaneocuboid joint. This is how your uh, destruction uh, occurs. Now, this is the kind of, uh, uh, okay, I, I'm going to show you the picture how John does the destruction. Okay, so this is how this was temporarily fixed. You need to go on both the sides of peroneae and calcaneocuboid as well as subtalar joint fusion was done and multiple implants you would need to use. That's a calcaneocuboid uh, plate using the calcaneocuboid. This is the subtalar joint fusion with a plate and screws and it went on to heal. So 
I see few questions. Uh, does lateral plate not cause any peroneal tendon problems? No. When you put in a lateral plate, it is the lateral plate which compresses the blast of the lateral wall. So it doesn't really uh, uh, irritate the tendons. Yes, sometimes if you have such kind of irritation, you can go in. Once the fracture heals, then you can remove the plate. There's a study published from the Eastern literature where surgeons, they routinely remove the calcaneal plate and at the same time they do arthroscopy of subtalar joint and they uh, just release out all the incisions and all the adhesions and fibrosis into the subtalar joint and then they mobilize the patient. They notice that the subtalar stiffness is less in this kind of cases. Uh, heal fat pad avulsion management protocol. If uh, it's a heal fat pad avulsion, uh, which is based pro based proximally, it has a good prognosis. You just reattach it. Maybe you might wish to put in a drain. Most importantly, you will need to put in something which would uh, fix that heal fat pad with the bone. So I like to put in few K wires which would go from heel fat pad to the talus and you can to the calcaneus to the talus sometimes and you can bend this wire so that this wire should prevent falling down of the heel fat pad. If the evolution of the heel fat pad is distally based, it has got a very poor prognosis. You try to reconstruct it. If it fails, then I think you may have to go for sural neurocutaneous flap or a free flap but again prognosis is very bad because these flaps are not sensate and you need sensate flaps at the heel so avulsions which are distally based are very bad if you have an avulsion with the bony fragment which is sliced out it is good for you you, you fix the fragment flap also fits with that uh, i think uh, that is about heel fat pad uh, for long do, how long do we keep the wire? Which, uh, Omar, this is, you mean it for the hill fat pad avulsions? You keep it for about three to four weeks. If you, I think you mean it for the, uh, this thing. So during the fasciotomy of uh, uh, compartment syndrome of the foot, especially on the lateral side, do you keep in view uh, to go and fix it further and do we take it in line of the incision or how do we take it, sir? See, my personal belief is that I try to avoid doing compartment release as okay. far as possible. Keen observation is required. Now, if you want to really release the compartment, you will need to put in one central incision on the foot and one medial incision on the uh, heel. So, with the medial incision, you will be able to release all plantar compartment and one dorsal incision into the center, you will be able to release all other compartments. In the but, center, do you mean sec between second and third? Yeah, or? you have seen one picture I saw you. Yes, sir. Yeah. That is right. Hardly yeah. you put in two incisions. Eh? That was somebody else's sketch. You just sent me. Okay. And I okay. just kept it. Uh, heel pad. Yeah. So I think Omar's question is answered. Heel fat pad injury. And uh, that's a great question because I thought I should have included heel fat pad uh, injuries also into it. And this all heel fat pad injuries, they do require post -op. And When you start walking, you need to give some soft uh, support to them for a pretty long time. You know, a silicon heel cushion or something like that. So, uh, I, I think it's already one. And uh, maybe uh, we can uh, uh, talk on calcaneus. Mal union some other time and we may like to just end here uh, only thing I wanted to show you uh, that how you do the distraction for a calcaneous uh, uh, fracture when you're going to go ahead with uh, MIS uh, uh, technique
Any question till that time? I'm just trying to search out this, that picture. Sir, you have mentioned about Hinterman's distractor. Is there any other distractions that uh, distractors that you advise for a starter like us to buy uh, to help in distraction? No, I think Hinterman distractor, distractor is one of the very good distractor which you must have when you want to do foot and ankle cases. Uh, so the metal work that we put from uh, the calcaneal tuberosity uh, from the plantar aspect does it uh, cause intractable heel pain sometimes? Uh, is it a cause of heel pain or uh, what? No, and how do that, it is that uh, it is that injury to the heel fat pad which occurs uh, at the time at the time of uh, injury is what is the cause of heel pain. Not that the it is the hill fat pad which uh, uh, is uh, is giving pain because of the fixation. So I just wanted somebody was asking me about non-union of calcaneus, and uh, I just want to show you one case uh, of non-union calcaneus, and you really will not. Uh, Realize that this patient would have non-union of calcaneus. Sir, my question was, I was the one who asked it, sir, and my question was based on you taking out the articular facets and keeping it on table and, uh, you know, threading them with the K-wire and putting them back. Mm -hmm. So, that's absolutely acceptable. Absolutely ac acceptable. Okay. Sir. Doesn't give any problem. <laughs> Doesn't give any problem. Yeah, you feel it scary? But uh, it doesn't give any problem, and that is what Even radial head also we used to do like this. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, there is one question in chat. As seen in some of your screws tend to migrate out, so can we routinely remove it? Uh, yes. If you feel that the screws have migrated out and it is giving a pressure. Uh, to the patient, uh, you can, you can, and you should. Uh, okay, are you, are you are you seeing my screen? Yes, sir. Yeah. So someone was asking a question on to non-union calcaneus. Now look at this patient. This was an obese female, and this kind of fixation was done in United States of America. Would you believe this? Right. And, they are, and when this X-rays were sent to me, I said that I want to see the injury X-rays. And then she was not given injury X-rays. So she was operated and then she had a lot of pain, a lot of trouble. So they connected to me and I said, ask your doctor to remove implant. Ask your doctor to remove implant immediately. So implants were removed they removed the implant and then still she had pain in foot and ankle and she had inability to walk obviously you know the reason here you see the screws were passed from medial side i'm sure that this must have damaged posterior tibial nerve and the neuritic pain was what bothering her so I said, ask your doctor to remove the screw and put in a big incision and look for some neuroma or something which has gone wrong or look at the damage to the uh, flexor hallucis longus and repair it. So, she had a burning pain in the sole, burning, lateral, all, all these things. So, medial screw removed. But they did not do anything to any other structure. So, pain persisted. Then I said, now... The only way out is you need to come down to India and I cannot treat you on phone like this or on email like this. So then about a year and a half or so, she could manage to come down to India. And this was the picture at presentation. And she had problems like this. She had a clawing of the toes. She had subtalar joint arthritis. She had talus, which was dorsiflex. She had contracture of the tendo Achilles. Her heel was in varus. Her heel was shortened. She had Shorter. a sural nerve injury. 
So we had a posterior tibial nerve injury, secondary tarsal tunnel syndrome. She had clawing of the toes and somebody was asking me about fat pad. So she had fat pad atrophy. You can see how much fat pad has contracted. So these were the problems when this patient came to me. So I went in and uh, uh, on exploration, there was clear cut non-union between the body and the anterior fragment. And subtalar arthritis was also there between body and talus. So what I was forced to do was I took out the iliac crest grafts and two grafts were put in, one between body and anterior fragment, one between body and talus. And to the best of my ability, whatever I could do, I did to reduce the talar declination. I also went in medially and explored the tarsal tunnel. I released the nerve. I did the neurolysis and I did tarsal tunnel release. She also had claw toes, which were also corrected. And for non-union calcaneus, high index of suspicion should be there. That is very, very important. So was one of the case where I faced non-union, I thought I would say. In this case, sir, you found any neuroma? Or pain is because of arthritis and non-union? No, pain also was because of neurotic pain. So there was some damage to the nerve and there was quite adherence of the nerve with the structure around and I just released the nerve completely. And she was given neurotropics for I think 9 to 12 months and she is reasonably good. I won't say that she is very good. So, no questions, any comments, or uh, we will stop here and maybe I'll come up with the date. Dr. Tanna sir wants me to take uh, uh, calcaneus, talus, and metatarsal. So, these three titles sir has asked me to take. So, we'll figure out Sunday only for this and maybe the same time we'll start by 11 and by 1 1 30. okay i hope there are no questions no comments sir one request sir please sir we uh, i regularly do with you extended lateral approach calcaneum but i want you to have a few words about it so that uh, everyone can be benefited how you are dissect your dissection is very important so lateral approach so basic things sir yeah what so, care we should take yeah let me let me pull out the video of extensile exposure to the extensile the extensile lateral approach so give me 2 minutes Okay, so uh, let me share my screen.
my screen is visible yes sir yes sir yes okay so uh this is the open reduction internal fixation video the medial wall blast looking at is some of posterior the ap projection calcaneus down first structure encountered is calcaneo fibular ligament sir only voice is heard video is not uh, video playing, is sir. not shown okay uh, and that was a old video so i am trying to find out the yeah it is here uh okay i will have to do something here optimize for video clip mike is that what i have to click so now sound as well as video are you able to see and listen no sir no no sound no sir no, no sir. sir no no video no no audio sir no video no audio uh mahek uh, can you guide me what i need to do for that why is that video is not seen okay what i do i'll take that video in a powerpoint and would we'll try to share so uh, this video would speak more about uh, how you do the uh, elevation of the flap when you taking a lateral extensile approach and this is little uh, heavy file so it takes time to open and uh, hope till the if you have any questions i'll be happy to take it to take a minute or so for this video to load okay okay so i am going to share screen now are you able during... to see the screen yes sir good and uh, uh, you are able to see the screen and listen yes, to the voice this is a blank slide and now yes sir i am going to run through video tell me if you are not listening to voice or you not able to see the video is that okay now Yes, sir. We are able to see. Okay. Yes, sir. And you should be able to listen to the sound also. If I do not know whether there is a sound or not, yeah. Sound is not there. So it probably sound is not there in video, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is a calcaneus fracture. This is the kind of position you position your patient, and uh, now. This is all views and all this thing. I just well, this is a wrinkle test. You see for the wrinkles, 
and then you start marking your insert. Now this is where what you see you want to show. So you mark lateral yes, vertebrae, sir. you mark uh, tendon Achilles, and you start a K wire from the tip of the fifth metatarsal. Let it touch to the tip of the lateral malleus where it ends here. That should at least be minimum size of your vertical limb. That is how you decide uh, how do you put in your vertical limb. So that is how I am marking vertical limb, horizontal limb. And, and if you can see here, this patient has got a calcaneo cuboid uh, combination. So I have extended my incision distally and downwards. So I am going to put the incision. I put in a hammer blow so that small fragments come into position. And you see, over the bone, my knife is put in sharply. I am using this bump as one of the key assistant. When I am putting the incision, bump is out. When I am reflecting the flap, bump would be in. When I am putting the K wires, bump would be out. The so towel bump is being used as assistant. So when I am going to lift the flap, I am going to push the towel bump upwards and my assistant is going to hold the hill in inversion. So <laughs> look at this. I am putting the reverse side of the forcep. I am not retracting at all. Unless and until this is a subperiosteal dissection and uh, no handling of the flap. Unless I see the, once I see the peronia and calcaneofibular ligament, then only, yeah, this is the calcaneofibular ligament. Now, once I see this, then only my assistant is going to put in a retractor. And one of, one of the assistant is going to invert the hill. And my bump is lying above. So, my dissection is made easy with this. And once I have reached out to the talus, I, you can see the talus here. I use K wires as retractors. And this K wires anterior portion of the talus, posterior portion of the talus is where I put in the K wires. And I, before retracting the flap, I'm going to slid weight gauze. And now, when I want to put in a K wire into cuboid, I, I'm going to bring this bump outside so that heel goes into E version. So yes. peroneal gets relaxed and putting of the K wire makes my, I mean, it is easier. So this three K wires, anterior, posterior part of talus and into the cuboid. And this is how I slid the weight gauze, which is continuously kept weight. And this is a kind of exposure and the rest you all know. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anything else? There is one question in chat box. Mm, video not visible. Okay. Video was on. Okay. So, sir, okay. sir, in one of your slides, uh, you have taken out the implants after the fusion. Uh, do you recommend taking out those implants in all the cases or? Uh... So, somebody, somebody told me that if implants back out, what do you do? So, when implants back out, if there is a problem yeah, okay. with impingement, so that was a problem in that case. Uh, okay. So I had to remove the implant. So but you regularly don't the... recommend taking them out? No, no, not on a routine. Okay. Thank you. So uh, thank you everybody for being with me on your uh, uh, family days morning. I hope uh, I have stood to your expectations. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Bye. 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 Thank mm -hmm. you.